Isaac. Hey, Tanner. How you doing, man? I'm pretty good, man. How's things? Good. I, I'm trying to think. Have you ever been here with the guys before in, in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan? You know what? There's a 50% chance that I have. It sounds so familiar, <laughs> and I have a... I have a show list here on my computer somewhere. I'll look for it while we talk. And I'll I was I I don't recall you ever being here, but it's it, it, I it, don't it, I don't either. <laughs> but you got to you got to make that happen, my friend. Oh, dude, I'd love to. Now, uh, uh, Isaac on the line from the fray. Now, a lot of people know you because I guess you guys kind of really really blew up with the uh, the Grey's Anatomy uh, soundtrack, which really kind of got you out there. Now, now I was talking to somebody, I can't remember who it was one time, who said that. Don't put your music on a soundtrack. It, it's it's selling out, whatever. But what? How do you feel about that? I think I think it, it worked for you. Well, thanks, man. Um, there's new rules, I think, mm-hmm. um, and I don't say that just to justify <laughs> my actions. Um, <laughs> I was I was so opposed to commercials and licensing, and um, not so much movies because movies have had a, a history of incredible usage of music since the mm-hmm. the dawn of the media, but. Um, for for TV shows and definitely for commercials, um, for radio jingles or something. There's always been a little bit of a judgment from the the tight pants hipsters yeah. that you're just not supposed to do it. It's not cool. Mm-hmm. Bob Dylan doesn't do it, so we sure as hell aren't going to do it. <laughs> and then in uh, 2003, 2004, before we got into the the mainstream, um, all the wells started drying up. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the industry started shifting. Sony sold their helicopter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the majors started freaking out because mm-hmm. um, people were stopping buying real records, and artists started looking for for new outlets and avenues for indus- in for uh, income. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, Bob Dylan did a Chevy commercial, and Tom Petty did a Ford commercial or something, and John Mellencamp did a commercial, and like the old, the old legacy guys started doing it, and then the Shins, they got on Garden State, yeah, yeah. and then they did they did some commercial I can't remember it was like for Intel or something, and the whole hipster community threw up. And then they cleaned themselves up, and then they started licensing. <laughs> so I watched all that process happen way before I had the option. Um, and then when, when we got the opportunity in, in 05, 06, 07 to start licensing stuff to mm-hmm. ER and to Grey's um, Anatomy and to, to some other commercials and some other shows and movies, it felt like a no-brainer. Our heart and soul is to get the music out in front of as many people as possible for our... our uh, our gauge went from we can't do it to let's do it and not embarrass ourselves, yeah. and that's that's still the gauge today. And it, and it works. It's a way to get get yourself out there. Like, why not? Like, is there is there a show or a movie right now that you you would you would totally wish that they would pick up your music? Um, anything out there? What do you what what are you into right now? What are you watching? <laughs> Man, I'm in the nostalgia phase. I'm I'm going through all the shows I watched in the '80s. Oh yeah, was, I'm I'm starting to go through A Team and uh, Knight Rider, and uh, actually I'm still watching West Wing. <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm a throwback TV guy. So if there's any way we could get on a West Wing episode retroactively, maybe yeah. with like a new DVD set or something. I'd be way into that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge throwback guy too, man. I talked to Corey Feldman yesterday on the show. So I, no way. I know. I didn't think he would do it. I was like, there's no way he'll answer the phone when I call him. And he totally answered the phone. It was like 35 minutes of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, well, so what was Star Wars or Star Trek then? What was it for you growing up? Star Trek. Really? That yeah. just because my mom. I was a, I was, I was a grafted in genealogically to Star Trek. If I had a choice, I would have done Star Wars, but... She was a big Trekkie. Are you excited then, like, the vinyl's making a comeback now? Do you guys press a lot of your stuff on vinyl or no? We do. Yeah, we yeah. make sure to press everything. The first one wasn't mastered for vinyl, so mm-hmm. it doesn't sound very good if you ever track it down. Um, the second, third, and the fourth are all great. Actually, I haven't heard the fourth on vinyl yet, but second, third are great on vinyl. So you think that's ultimate for you? That'd be ultimate format? Would be vinyl over all else? Would, is, are, you, are you that kind of guy? Uh, well... I mean, if you have the time to sit down and, and actually listen to it on mm. some tube tube preamps um, with some great open speakers, uh, it's definitely worth it. But most of us are just running around town doing errands, so <laughs> earbuds and uh, MP3 gets the gets the job done. Yeah, I the, certainly prefer prefer vinyl. The if there was a yeah. backpack record player that I could carry <laughs> around with me, 
with uh, some open air speakers mounted on my shoulders, I'd definitely do that. You need like one hell of an anti shock on that thing, though, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just wrapped in bubble wrap, so you'll be... Yep. Totally, man. And yeah, you, now you got some new stuff out. Uh, where can we get your new album? Like, what, what's the deal with this? Uh, it's called Helios, right? Yeah, it's called Helios. It's out Tuesday uh, in the U.S. Is it out Tuesday in Canada? Uh, yeah, I believe we're on the same on the same page as you guys, so yeah. Great. Um, if you like the thing in your hands, that's that's the way to go for me. Run down to your, your local and buy it. If, mm-hmm. uh, if you're on the go, iTunes is the way to do it, and... Just jump on there and make it happen. We're putting it out a couple of months after we finished it. I mean, nice. a long time after we finished it, but we're really, really proud of it and happy where it lands on the, the challenging the band spectrum. Because you know, by the fourth record, you're really in a position to just repeat yourself and mm. make everybody happy, and then they get bored and then leave, or really challenge yourself and, and dig deep and find something new. And that's what we did. And will it be available on vinyl? Is the question. Absolutely. And will it be available on 8-track? Absolutely not. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm gonna have to throw my, my, my deck out. I don't have no use for that thing anymore. No one puts... <laughs> I think that's a safe assumption. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting on that guy that's got it still. I'm like, it's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. Hey, yeah, you got any uh, Neil Young 8-track tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I got a couple of random questions, and these ones come through uh, people on text or whatever earlier. They didn't really have a new place to fit in, so I'm just gonna I'll, I'll, like rapid fire throw them at you. We'll we'll see what what happens Shoot. here. All right, so if you could be immortalized in a uh, statue or a, a song, what would you what would you want to go with? Oh, jeez, uh, ooh, statue. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, hey. Oh. So, <laughs> Any uh, any particular pose or, or outfit you? No, do? no, no. It would just be sculptor's choice. <laughs> okay, uh, Olympics on right now. As you uh, maybe know, maybe you're not watching it. Uh, if you could medal in an Olympic sport, what would it be? Speed skating. You really? Yep. Did you ever do that growing up? Were you a skater? I was, yeah. And then what happened? I did figure skating for a minute, but uh, that toe pick kept messing with me, so hmm. I was more of a speed skater. The toe pick, I hate that. It's always it's like broken nose right there. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, other bands that you commonly get mistaken for. What is that one band that people always mix mix you guys up with? Born Republic. Yeah, we actually. Yep. <laughs> I can vouch for that because uh, going into the interview, someone was like, "Oh yeah," I'm like, "No, that's not the phrase." Like, love them too late to apologize. <laughs> and they're like, "Is it that they love don't die?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's 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 the one." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, growing up, influences for you. Uh, what, what was what was it? What was the the bands that you were? Were you were you into the Bob Dylan or the the Neil Young? What was it for you? Uh, no, I was remarkably uh, sheltered, so it was all religious music until I was probably sixteen. So the uh, usual suspects: Amy Grant, I Michael Lily Smith, Stephen Curtis Chapman, and then uh, sixteen, I discovered uh, jazz. Mm-hmm. Ray Charles, Nat. Natalie Cole actually was the first CD I ever bought. Nice. Um, Nat King Cole, that's where I got into her. And then I uh, started discovering some late 90s college rock with uh, mm-hmm. Third Eye Blind and Better Than Ezra and Bush. Those are probably my, my three big ones. And then, uh, and then I discovered County Crows and it was all over. Oh, you should, you know, you're not going to rock the dreads? I think, I, think, I think that's waiting for a comeback too right there. I'd love to have enough hair. I don't really have that option, so <laughs> you just wear wear the wear the dread wig on stage. Be your new thing, man. It's real, I swear. <laughs> All right, man. Before you go, uh, we actually do this. Funny, we talk about the throwback thing. Uh, we every week we do a throwback Thursday show, which is well today. But we we try to get everybody we have on through interviews throughout the week to make a throwback request to to air on Thursday. Now it'd be great to have a request from you. Anything you grew up with growing up? Anything? Yeah, anything. Like anything, anything. Yeah, we uh, we're like we're the top forty hit station, so we play a lot of your stuff. We and we and we and we throw back. We throw back to oh man, like you said, Third Eye Blind. We play them. We play anything pop, Britney Spears, boy bands, Notorious B.I.G. What do you what are you thinking? Throw it like early nineties would be best. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm on my phone. I'm on my computer. Hold on. Uh, I can't remember the. <laughs> okay. Uh, which boys to men song was? Um, acapella. Oh, the end of the road, or I swear, boys to men. That came out of nowhere. I don't. I never would have called that a million years ago. You, boys to um, men. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna do 
Water Runs Dry, Boys to Men. It's the song I smuggled into my house uh, through my through my Walkman when Ooh. no one was looking. <laughs> so I you, would have been grounded. This is the song that would have grounded me. So you growing up in, in a household full of Christian music and Star Trek, this was the one that would have put you over. <laughs> Welcome to my childhood. <laughs> I feel like we've grew up together. I know you so well now. <laughs> Wait, did you live on Grant Street? <laughs> Dude, we go to high school together? Oh. <laughs> All right, Isaac, buddy. Thank you so much. I don't want to keep any longer. Uh, thanks for the time, my friend. And we'll hope to, we hope to see you up here soon. Like you got to, you got to get up around, here, man. man. Are you Back doing? Here we come.